the recipe is for, I think, six people. This will probably feed about four that we're doing today. Um, it's easy to modify it. One of the one of the things that I don't have tonight in it that we love in our um, arroz con pollo are artichoke cards. You can add more asparagus, so you can kind of you will even see some people will put chorizo or sausage in it. Um, it's basically the same recipe that you would see people making paella, um, except it doesn't have the seafood. I'm partial to the arroz con pollo because I, although I love every single ingredient in the paella. I love every single ingredient if I yeah, not so much the you know all of it you know lobster with the fish because I love them all so and arroz con pollo is the same recipe you can put saffron or not you can add you know the other thing you can add the chorizo or you can add fish so when it's almost what I'm going to do is add the chicken which I had already cut up you're going to cook the chicken as the rice cooks so you want to Kind of brown it on all, you know, both sides. If you're gonna use, if you're gonna do it at home, um, I would suggest using the bone. When you use the bone after you add all the broth and, sh and the rice and all the other ingredients, the bone will add a lot of flavor to your arroz con pollo or paella if you're doing them that way. So I'm just gonna brown them real quick on both sides. I've got the other one. Starting, it takes about seven to eight minutes for the water to boil so that you can start steaming in the Vita Chef. So in a minute, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I did my chicken salad. Add a little bit of Cuban adobo. So I would probably, and, and I've got the recipe I, I figured out. This is the first, um, the blend that I ever made. Uh, and you think of adobo when you marinate something. So if you're gonna marinate, you were marinate the chicken in some sour oranges, which are hard to get here. So uh, what I did in my mix is I blended oranges with limes to give it a little bit more tartness than you would with a normal adobo. And then it's got garlic, onion. So you normally just wanna get the chicken brown. And, um, this is chicken broth that I made last night, but I put it in the freezer. So it's okay. <laughs> Chunky chicken broth. It's okay, but I'm going to show you how to start this one while that defrosts, and then we'll uh, we'll add the rice, and then I'll cook in 20 minutes. So now I'm going to make Cuban potato salad, and I've got the, the potatoes here and, I'm, and with some olive oil. And the other day I decided I wanted to flavor it with all things foul. It's one of our blends, and it has celery, onion, pepper, garlic, savory, parsley, rosemary, salt, and sage. Kind of all the things you think at Thanksgiving. A lot of times when I cook any kind of fowl, any kind of bird, I'll take some, melt some butter, I'll add some olive oil, all things fowl, make like a paste, and put it under the skin of the bird. So I also use it to make, uh, when I make homemade chicken salad, and I also use it to make homemade bread crumbs. I just put the potatoes on one side. And I'm gonna do the same thing with, uh, oops, sorry, I'm gonna do the same thing with the chicken. We're gonna, in the end, mix the potatoes with the chicken. But the Vitus chef does a really cool thing that Guy told me it would do and I didn't believe him, and that's the flavors don't transfer. So if you were cooking potatoes, yeah. a sweet potato, a piece of salmon, you could put everything on the same part of it to um, to steam and everything would taste the same. But that's what I did. Um, I probably touched it up with a little bit more salt. Um, I added mayonnaise, I added some of our mustard, um, and then I had, last night I blanched the asparagus so they were already ready. So did you refrigerate it after I did. I, I did. Let this cool and then refrigerate it. This was hard to blend all this together, but it's great. 